two really big diet strategies that are very popular right now in the mainstream. The ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. See, there's a common misconception out there that they're one and the same, or that they're very, very, very similar. So a lot of the keto people end up thinking that intermittent fasting is automatically for them. And a lot of the intermittent fasting people think that keto is automatically for them. Okay, not always the case, but what I do want to clear up in this video is how they do work harmoniously together. But when you do combine them, what you should have top of mind, like what you should be paying attention to. And I'll also give you a little bit of a breakdown in terms of what you should do, how you should time it out, when you should break your fast, how you should start your fast, give you the whole breakdown. You're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. There's new videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time and a bunch of other videos in between. So please make sure you hit that little bell icon so you can be part of the notification squad that gets a little ping on your phone every single time I post a video. All right, so before I get into exactly what you should do with keto and fasting combined, let me do two things. Let me explain why keto and fasting do work well together, but then let me also explain the clear difference between keto and fasting. So let's start with the history really quick. So I know that I have to give you a history lesson, but please, please, please stick with me throughout this entire video because I will give you the breakdown and you need all this information to have it make sense. Okay, so Fasting has been used for treatment of different diseases for years and years and years and years, like since 500 BC, like really, like it has been used as a method of treatment. Now, what they found in the early 1900s was that people that were suffering from epilepsy would ultimately have good results if they abstained from food, if they were fasting. So when they were fasting, they weren't having as many seizures. And it wasn't until the early 1920s that researchers and physicians started to connect the dots. They realized that the reason that people were having less seizures when they were fasting was because of the presence of what are called ketone bodies, beta-hydroxybutyrate and acetone specifically. So it was a specific doctor out of the Mayo Clinic that actually kind of connected the dots here. Okay, in 1921 and 1923, there were these recognitions that noticed, hey, these ketone bodies are what is creating the magic of fasting. But the same ketone bodies can be created by keeping carbs out of the diet and getting high fats in, known as ketonemia, basically where you're creating ketones also in the presence of just what else is going on with carbohydrates that are naturally, and glucose that's naturally flowing through your system no matter what. So that's where things got really interesting. So that's where the similarities of keto and fasting lie, is that basically the benefit as far as disease states go and as far as longevity goes and as far as energy goes, you're coming from the same source. You're relying on the ketones. So fasting relies on ketones. Ketosis obviously relies on ketones. So that's why they do work so harmoniously together is they have a history and they ultimately have the same common denominator. Now here's where they differ. The ketogenic diet does not imply that you go a set period of time without eating. You see, the ketogenic diet's all about still maintaining a regular meal schedule, but just keeping the carbs out so that your fats are high enough to elicit that ketogenic response and create those ketone bodies. Fasting doesn't imply that you have to be on a keto diet. You still get that benefit throughout the period of your fast because you're producing ketones during your fast. But when you break your fast, there's no rule that says you have to be in keto. Not at all. I know lots of people that intermittent fast with carbohydrates. Heck, I do it from time to time. But when you do combine keto and fasting, you have some really amazing things that happen because you have a double whammy effect. You see, what's happening in short essence is your body is getting used to using fats as a fuel source when you're in keto. You've conditioned your cells to become fat adapted. Okay, so basically your cells now know how to function on those fats very, very easily. They know how to do it because you're training them day in and day out with the ketogenic diet. So that way, when you do go into your fasting period, your body has the ability to switch gears and burn fat really, really fast. And it has the ability to already create those ketones. Let me give you an example. If you're eating carbs, and again, I'm not saying that carbs are bad, but if you're eating carbohydrates and then you start fasting, well, it's going to take a period of time for your body to exhaust some of those carbohydrate stores and ultimately create ketones. So your actual ketone benefit of that fast doesn't really kick in for a while. But if you're already on the ketogenic diet, ultimately the moment you start fasting, your body's upregulating its amount of ketones. It's upregulating what's called ketogenesis, the liver's ability to create ketones from fat. 
So you're kicking yourself forward a notch. You're allowing yourself to get into that optimal state much, much, much faster, meaning you can reap the benefits both from a body composition standpoint and a longevity standpoint significantly, markedly faster. So what we have to ask ourselves is, what does this process look like? So let's say you're going to do an intermittent fasting regimen and you're excited to try it out and you want to combine it with keto. Well, here's the formula, okay? Pretty simple. You're going to want to make sure that you're doing the ketogenic diet for a few weeks before you plug in intermittent fasting. You don't have to, but the reason that I want you to do this is because it gives your body time to get fat adapted and it gives your body time to develop the mitochondrial machinery to really utilize those fats well. So if you're just starting out, you want to do that. And even if you're not starting out, I want you to reset and practice again. You're going to go strict keto with no fasting for three to four weeks. Get yourself fat adapted. Get yourself there. Okay, and you're going to want to focus on just eating a traditional ketogenic diet that's anti-inflammatory. So what I mean by that is keep dairy to a minimum. Keep some of these things out. Keep it clean. Keep it really clean so your body has nothing to do but focus on creating ketones so that you can get the most out of your fasting. Then a few weeks later, I want you to start implementing intermittent fasting. But don't do it every single day. Okay, now I'm not saying that fasting every day is terrible, but what I am gonna say is that you're gonna get more effect long-term if you intermittent fast maybe every other day or three times per week. Why? Because it allows you to maintain a nice moderate calorie level for the baseline course of the week and then use your intermittent fasting days as a calorie deficit tool. So basically, you're not depriving your calories throughout the rest of the week, but you are depriving yourself of calories on the intermittent fasting days. Therefore, you're not having this constant downregulation of your metabolism or your resting metabolic rate. You're basically keeping your calories at your normal baseline level on your standard keto days, and on your intermittent fasting days, you're aggressively dropping them. Okay, now what you're gonna wanna do step by step is right before you're starting your fast, you're gonna wanna consume high amounts of DHA. Okay, now what that is is docosahexaenoic acid. That's good quality omega-3s. Okay, so what I recommend is eating things like salmon or eating things like sardines as your last meal. Why do I say this? Because DHA and those omega-3s are so important when you're fasting and they're so important on a keto diet. But when you're fasting, if you were to consume omega-3s, you'd put yourself in a situation where you're breaking your fast because it's an oil. Even if you take a capsule, it's an oil. So you can't be doing that, it's gonna break your fast. So what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna have a high amount of those fats prior to going into your fast. So your last meal of the day is going to be something high fat, preferably with some fish, or if not with fish, at least adding a good amount of fish oil pills to the mix. Then you go into your fast. Okay. You can also add a good amount of fiber to the mix, so it's gonna satiate you throughout the day. Now again, this is kind of entry level. If you're just starting out, you're practicing combining keto and fasting. So, what that schedule would look like is at the end of your evening time, at the end of your day, on your standard keto day, maybe 8 p.m., 9 p.m., you'd have that high fat meal. Okay? Then you'd stop eating. You go to bed, you wake up the next morning, and you're still not eating. Okay? You're consuming your green tea, you're consuming your black coffee, things like that. Okay? And then you go through the course of the day for 16, 18, 20, 22 hours, whatever you choose, you can go as long as you want, and then you're gonna break your fast. Okay? Now, how you break your fast is very, very important on a keto diet too. You see, this is where things get complicated because if you're breaking your fast and you're not keto, it's a whole different strategy. But if you're breaking your fast with keto, then obviously it's a different strategy again. So there's two different ways, okay? You can break your fast with just some fats, like keep it super, super simple, or you can break your fast with just protein. Okay, I like to keep fats out of the equation right when you break your fast if there's gonna be protein present. Pick one or the other, proteins or fats, okay? and you're gonna consume a small amount. You're gonna consume maybe four ounces of protein, maybe three ounces if you're a smaller person, and you're only gonna consume maybe 20 grams of fat if you're going that route. And then about an hour later is when you're gonna actually wanna consume your normal meal, your normal ketogenic meal. Now one thing that's very, very important when you're breaking your fast or when you're in your eating period is that you're keeping your protein levels moderately low and keeping your fat levels higher. What this is gonna do is it's gonna optimize that ketone production. Your ketones are already revving up high because you're fasting. Okay, you already have a high level of ketones in your blood, which means you're already burning a lot of fat. You can keep that process heavily alive, like really strongly alive, by keeping your protein a little bit lower and keeping your fats higher. Don't worry, you're not gonna lose muscle mass, you're totally fine. And you can increase your protein a little bit more on your next ketogenic day. You see, again, people are gonna want to be tempted to intermittent fast every single day. But honestly, some of the issues that come to be with that are more on the emotional side. 
you can put yourself into a situation where you actually develop sort of an emotional addiction to intermittent fasting just because it's easier and because you feel better. So you want to make sure that you're cognizant of that. Now, when it comes down to which foods to choose when you're doing both keto and intermittent fasting, it can get very, very complex. So I've actually made things very, very simple. What I've done is I've managed to team up with Thrive Marketplace. You guys know Thrive? Okay, they're the online grocer. Basically, you can get all of your groceries, all of your items, significantly cheaper than the grocery store, delivered right to your doorstep. But I'm good friends with the guys over at Thrive, so what I've done is I've actually literally built my own Thrive box. So it has the sardines, it has the apple cider vinegar, it has the products, the foods that you need. And I'm not talking about supplements or any kind of weird stuff like that. I'm talking about literal food items. So you can literally click on the link in the description and it'll take you to my personal Thrive Market box. It'll take you to a page that has all the items in my box so you can get it shipped to your door in one simple thing. So you can put into practice everything that I'm instructing in this video. Literally, everything that you're gonna need to be able to break your fast, things you're gonna need to start your fast, things you're gonna need on a normal keto day and to also just keep you sane so that you have good snacks. We're talking good anti-inflammatory foods. So Thrive actually makes this possible. And again, it's literally cheaper than the grocery store. So huge thank you to them for making this video possible, for sponsoring this channel so that I can keep my content free, but also giving all of my fans and all of my viewers a special discount on my personal keto box. So make sure you're checking them out in the description below Finish up this video and then get your hands on a keto box and a fasting box all together. That's going to make your life a heck of a lot easier. Okay, so some people are wondering probably about bulletproof coffee and fat coffee and things like that and where that falls into intermittent fasting. So the way that I want you to look at things is if it has calories, it's going to break a fast. Pretty straightforward, okay? So we don't want to be having bulletproof coffee or fat coffee or anything like that on a fasting day. But what you can do to make your life easier is use it as a breakfast meal. Okay, so on your normal keto days, with days that you are not fasting, go ahead and have your fat coffee. Have that, it's super simple, go for it. But don't count it as a fasting day because it's not a fast. It's a big mistake that people will generally make. They'll add that in and then they wonder why they're not losing weight. Well, they're having three, four, 500 calories from a fat coffee or bulletproof coffee when they think that they're fasting. So that's breaking the process of the fast. So again, you can skip your breakfast and have the fat coffee instead, the keto coffee, but treat it as a keto day, treat it as a meal. So what that does is it combines the process of being able to have the luxury and the ease of fasting with just a liquid breakfast, but you're treating it as a keto day so that you can keep your calories high. So again, what we're trying to go for is calories moderate, your baseline, then drop. Calories moderate, then drop. That way we're not on this constant downslope of having to consistently reduce our calories time and time and time again to get the desired result. Okay, now what about working out? What should you time your workout when you're actually doing an intermittent fasting keto combination? Okay, well the cool thing is, when you're combining keto and fasting, you have a heck of a lot more flexibility to time your workouts. That's one of the biggest benefits. Because normally, you're having to structure your workouts surrounding your eating window and your non-eating window. Because what's gonna happen is if you have carbs with your break fast, when you're actually breaking your fast and you have carbs, it changes the entire paradigm, entire energy system that your body's using. Which means you have to get really critical about when you're timing your workouts. But with keto, you're at a constant baseline. Your body's always using ketones. It's always using fat. So work out in your fasting period, work out in your eating period. It really doesn't make too much of a difference. I will say you'll get more metabolic cosmetic effect, body composition effect if you train during your fasted period simply because you're gonna be in a deficit and your body's gonna recruit more actual stored body fat. But as far as energy goes, as far as stamina goes, you're gonna feel pretty darn similar throughout the board. Even with intermittent fasting, if carbs are in the equation, you're still gonna to have to battle blood sugar rises and falls. It's just a natural process. With keto, you're gonna be nice and even through your fast and nice and even through your non-fasting period. You will find that fasting becomes significantly easier. All right, what about supplementation? Like what kind of things should you be focusing on? What should you be taking during your fast if you're doing a keto diet? So if you're doing a keto diet and you break into a fast, some of the things that you might wanna consider taking during your fast are gonna be things like maybe acetylcarnitine. Acetyl-L-carnitine is gonna help fat get mobilized into the cell a little bit better, but specifically can cross through the blood-brain barrier. So acetyl-L-carnitine is good. Uh, regular L-carnitine is good if you're actually working out heavily. That's gonna help you out. Uh, green tea extract, things like that, apple cider vinegar. Again, you can get those in the Thrive Box too, so that's really simple. But really what we're focusing on is keeping it water-soluble vitamins, so no fat-soluble vitamins at all, because that will break a fast, so no soft gels. If it's a soft gel, you wanna avoid it. You wanna to try to consolidate all of your supplements into your eating window, if possible. 
Okay, so try to take your fish oils, try to take your vitamin D, all that stuff. Try to consolidate it into your eating window because you have sort of a biochemistry effect that happens when you consume that product with food. You're going to absorb it a little bit better if it's fat soluble. You can't take a fat soluble vitamin without a whole lot of food, without it either upsetting your stomach, breaking a fast, or really not getting absorbed as well. So it's best to just allocate them all towards the evening time. And lastly, the big thing that we want to talk about is caffeine. Okay, so caffeine is going to help mobilize fats even more. So one of the biggest benefits that you get from intermittent fasting is the fact that you have a big increase in epinephrine and norepinephrine. Now, this is adrenaline. These are things that are normally misconstrued as bad, but they're very good. You see, fat loss occurs only, really only in the presence of that stuff. So basically, when you get to a point when you're calorie deprived, your adrenaline spikes up, so it starts triggering the release of fat. Okay, and that fat loss occurs at the site of hormone-sensitive lipase. Whole different story for a different day. I've done videos on that. But basically what caffeine's going to do is it is going to trigger those catecholamines, the adrenaline, noradrenaline, epinephrine, to be up a little bit higher so fat loss is mobilized even more. Now, if you are on the keto diet, you're already having fat mobilized. So what's going on with the caffeine is you're really accelerating that and allowing that process to work even better. So again, by combining keto with fasting, you put yourself in that ideal situation. So really that's what we're looking for. And then last but not least, just an added side note, when you're on your keto days, it's important to keep the time between meals as long as possible. Try to go for five or six hours between meals. It's the period between eating where your body will burn the fat, period. Okay, although people will tell you that snacking is a good way to lose weight, studies have consistently shown that people that snack lose less weight than people that actually have a good amount of time between meals. So don't believe all that nonsense. On your keto days, keep it three square meals, nice and simple. Don't eat six meals per day. Don't do any of that. Three square meals, then break into your fast. I'm happy to go more in depth with this topic. I'm happy to break down a lot more of it, but I wanted to at least give you the simple rundown on how this works. And I wanted to have an opportunity to share my Thrive Box with you. So also make sure you check out Thrive Marketplace and my special discount on my specific keto and fasting box that's down in the description below. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and let me know if you have any ideas for future ones. See you soon.